Hi guys, it's me Chess here and welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to share with you how I make my waistcoat. It's the transition season and I think this DIY is the perfect one for it. You can wear this waistcoat itself on a hot day or you can layer it with a t-shirt or a long sleeve shirt on a colder day. And I was trying to make it as simple as possible but still make sure it will be finished perfectly. So I hope you will like it and try it out. And let's get started. The first step is making the pattern for the waistcoat. To make the back badass pattern, I draw a straight line cutting a horizontal line first. From the first straight line, I draw another straight line at 2 cm next to it. From the cutting point between the second straight line and the horizontal line, I mark up 7 cm on the second straight line, which is the half of the next side of the waistcoat that I want. Then drawing a perpendicular line from that mark. The width of this line will be 3 cm, which is the dip of the neck and the back bladder. Then drawing a straight line from the end of this perpendicular line to cut the horizontal line. After that, I connect this cutting point to the other end of the perpendicular line. From the middle of this new slanted line, I connect to the end of the perpendicular line. Then connect the middle of this new slanted line to the other end of the perpendicular line to the cutting of it with the horizontal line. Based on it, I draw a curved line to finish the neckline of the back bladder. From the end of the second straight line, I mark up 14 cm, which is the half of my inside shoulder side, then drawing a perpendicular line from it. The width of this line will be 2.3 cm, which is 1 by 10 my inside shoulder side minus a half cm. Then connect the end of this line to the end of the neckline to finish the shoulder line of the back bladder. From the second straight line, I draw another one at 24 cm from it. It's the quarter of my bust side blood 4 cm. From the cutting point between this new line and the horizontal line, I mark up at 20.5 cm, which is the quarter of my bust side blood a half cm or more if you want the waistcoat loser. This line is also the bust line of the waistcoat. Then I continue the perpendicular line from the shoulder to cut the bust line. From the cutting point, I mark the inside of the bust line one and a half cm, then connect this mark to the end of the shoulder line. I mark in the middle of this new line first, then connect that mark to the mask on the bust line I made before. I keep marking in the middle of this new line before connecting it to the cutting point between the bust line and the perpendicular line. Keep marking in the middle of the new line before connecting it to the end of the bust line and the middle of the first slanted line. Based on it, I draw a curved line to create the sleeve line of the waistcoat of the back bladder. From the second straight line, I draw another one at 44cm from it. It's the length of the waistcoat from the shoulder to the end of my waist. From the cutting point between this line and the horizontal line, I mark up 20.5cm which is a quarter of my bust side plus a half cm. It's the same with the width on the bust line I made before that. Then connect this mark to the end of the sleeve line on the bust line to create the side line of the back bladder. From the second straight line, I keep drawing another one at 38cm from it. It's the width from the shoulder to the middle of my waist. It's also the waistline of the waist coast. From the cutting point between the new lines and the side line, I mark inside 1cm. Then connect it to two ends of the side line. Based on it, I draw a slightly curved line to finish the side line of the back bladder. I mark in the middle of the waist line first, then draw a horizontal line, go to it and cut the bust line and the ending line later. From this mark, I also make two other marks 1cm outside of it, then connect this mark to the cutting point on the first line. At the cutting point on the ending line, I make two more marks, a half centimeter outside of it. Then connect this mark to the mask on the waistline to finish the dot at the middle of the back bladder. After that, I connect the mask on the sleeve line to the top of the dot. Based on it, I draw the slightly curved lines to finish the dot at the middle of the back bladder. And here are two pieces of the back bladders after cutting. Add in 1cm seam allowance for them after that, except the line at the middle of the back as we will cut this pattern in full fabric. 
Moving to the front baddest pattern, I will create it based on the back baddest pattern. Instead of creating the shoulder line at the second straight line, I will do it at the first straight line. From the cutting point between the bust line and the perpendicular line, I mark inside 2.5cm, then connect this mark to the end of the shoulder line. After that, I create a sleeve line of the front baddest in the similar way that I did at the back baddest. From the end of the bust line, I mark up at 9cm which is 1 by 10 my bust side plus 1cm. Then draw a horizontal line through that notch and cut the ending line. After that, I created that there in the similar way that I did at the back. To create the button in the buttonhole area, I draw another horizontal line at 2cm outside the first one. It's the half width of the button in the buttonhole area that I want. From the top of this new line, I mark down 2cm, then connect it to one end of the shoulder line. Based on it, I draw a slightly curved line to create the neckline of the front baddest. The cutting point between this line and the first horizontal line is the end of the neck that you want. So if you want it deeper, move that mark lower. From the ending line, I draw another straight line 6cm outside of it. It's the extra length at the front of the baddest that I want. I mark in the middle of the ending line of the inside piece of the front baddest foot. Then drawing a perpendicular line to cut the new straight line. From the end of the new horizontal line, I mark the inside 1.5cm. Then connect the cutting point on the new straight line to this mark and to the end of the side line to create the ending line of the front baddest. I continue the dash at the front baddest to connect to the new ending line after that. And here are two pieces of the front baddest pattern after cutting, adding 1cm seam allowance for them after that. To make this Waco, I use 1 meter of khaki fabric in light gray color. I started with the front baddest of the waistcoat foot. I connect two pieces of the front baddest together at the dark lines. After sewing, I make a few small cuts at the curve line before ironing. From the end of the front baddest, I mark up 6cm, then drawing a straight line from that mark. From the cutting point with the dark line, I mark to the side part six and a half. From the cutting point with the dark line, I mark to the side part six and a half centimeters, and to the center part four centimeter. So the width between two marks will be ten and a half centimeters, which is the width of the front pocket that I want. After that, I draw another straight line at one centimeter above the first one. It's the length of the pocket that I want. I cut two rectangles to add to the pocket later. The smaller rectangle is 3 cm long, which is 3 times bigger than the length of the pocket, and 13.5 cm width, which is 3 cm bigger than the width of the pocket. The other rectangle is the same width but double the length of the first one. I fold the bigger rectangle in half and use the iron to keep my folding. 
After that, I draw a line at one centimeter under the folding line. Then I draw two straight lines, cut it, and create a pocket there. It's the same with the pocket that I drew at the front bodice. I add this folded tangle to the end of the pocket at the front bodice. Make sure they match at the drawing line, then sewing. At the smaller rectangle, I draw the pocket side in a similar way like the first one. However, the length will be a half of the pocket side. Then I add this rectangle to the top of the pocket at the front bodice. Make sure they met at the drawing line, then sewing. After that, I cut in the middle between two seams. However, at 1cm before the end of this cutting, I cut to the end of two seam and stick up going straight. Then I turn on the rest of two rectangle inside and sew at two sides to permanent them. Because it's a fake pocket, so I glow the pocket by connecting two rectangles together. I make a seam over the first seam at the fold rectangle. Making another piece like this for the other side of the front bodice. And here are two pieces of the front bodice after on. Moving to the back bodice, I cut four rectangles. Two small rectangles are 11cm width and 5cm length. Two bigger ones are 15cm wide and the same length. I connect two pieces of the small rectangle. I connect two pieces of the small rectangle together and doing the same for two pieces of the bigger rectangle. After sewing, I make a few cut at the edge of the rectangle before turning them inside out. I keep making other seam outside to make them permanent there. And here are two pieces of the strap at the back bodice to control the width of the waistcoat. Here are all the pieces of the back bodice after cutting. I connect them together at the dark line by the big foot. Before sewing, I add the strap that I just made before that to the dark line at 12cm above the ending line. Make sure the strap will be in the middle between two pieces of the back bodice and sewing to connect them on together. After sewing, I make a few small cuts at the curve line before ironing.
Now I'm connecting the back bodice and the front bodice together at the shoulder. After that, I make the same piece like this without the pocket in the strap for the lining part of the waistcoat. I connect them together at the sleeve in the neck and the button area. I also connect them together at the end of the waistcoat, but I just connect a half of them together and keep the rest open. After sewing, I make a few small cuts at the curve line before turning the waistcoat. Make the under sticking seam after that if you want to. Then I connect the side line at the back and the front bodice of the lining part and the main part together. After turning the waistcoat to high on the seaming side, I finish the end of the waistcoat by sewing the end of the lining part to the main part. However, keep the unsewed part at the middle of the back to turn the waistcoat later. After turning it, you can finish this open part by hand sew with the invisible stitching. The last step is adding the button and creating the button hole at the front of the waistcoat. I also add a button and create a button holes at a strap at the back of the waistcoat too. And I finish this DIY. Here's my final result. This is one of the DIY I wanted to make for so long. And finally I achieved it. I'm so happy with how it turns out. Hope you like it and try it out. See you next week.